Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Midstream Mana, where we are connecting in this digital space and carving out time in the midstream of the week, in the middle of the day, so that we can flow with God. Midstream Mana is one of the many ways Eden Theological Seminary lives out its call, which is to strengthen the life of the church, enliven critical reflection on faith, and support bold Christian discipleship. Today, I want to lift before you Psalm 121, which reads, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. For the next few moments, I want to preach from the subject, look up. Won't you pray with me? Gracious God, we thank you for this opportunity to gather together for this time that we would hear your word, that we would be in fellowship and in company with one, of the, uh, one another and a time in which we might be encouraged by you. Our prayer is that you would speak. We, your servants, are listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When I was a little girl, there were two things my father repeatedly told me to instill black pride. Because after all, it was the 1970s. A time of black power, black theology, black religion, black radicalism, and black panthers. And in those days, my father would tell me, black is beautiful, and hold your head up. You are a strong, proud black woman. Now, the first one I learned quickly, so quickly that I actually do not remember him saying it. I just remember sitting in Stride Right Shoe Store trying on patent leather shoes for Easter Sunday morning. And I must have been around five or six years old. And my father and I had picked out a pair of shoes that we liked. And after measuring my foot, the salesman brought out one box of black shoes and one box of white shoes in the style that I had chosen. He put on one white shoe and one black shoe on my feet and then asked me which one did I like. I looked questioningly at my father who nodded to me to choose. Now the white shoes were pretty actually different. I had never owned a pair of white patent leather shoes, but then I remember what my father said. And so I looked decidedly at the white salesman and announced the black ones because black is beautiful. Right, daddy? The salesman looked at my father who beamed with pride. That's right, baby. Black is beautiful. The second though, that was a little harder because I must have had this tendency to hold my head down when I walked. See, I remember my father often telling me, hold your head up. You are a strong, proud black woman. And y'all, if I were to be honest, I would have to admit that that perhaps was the hardest instruction for me to follow. That as a child in a 99% white school system where my intelligence was a surprise rather than an expectation, whose call took me to places and positions traditionally occupied by men who recognized that even when the doors my mind opened, my pocketbook often would not allow me to follow. I had to struggle to keep my head up. I did not naturally assume that position, but had to make a conscious decision to do so because a reliable source had one day told me, hold your head up, you're a strong, proud black woman. And life as an adult has not been any different. There are always personal barriers, being bereft of loved ones, 
but the awareness and constant reminders of brutality and brokenness and hatred in the world can often make us want to hold our head down. Hatred of the other, whether by race or ethnicity, class, religion, gender, gender identification, sexuality, a world in which we are so concerned with people's bedrooms and yet care nothing about the boardrooms that value profit over people or overflowing sick rooms because money trumps medical access and care or dining rooms occupied by people with empty plates and empty bellies or courtrooms where justice is denied and the law rule of law is partially applied in classrooms that have become killing fields because the love of guns overshadows learning. But when I, like you, struggle to hold my head up, Psalm 121 reminds us that there is some help if we would only look up. So here's the question I want to raise this afternoon, y'all. Where do we or will we look when trouble comes? Because in times like these, we are often tempted to look down. We can become so burdened, so broken, so bothered by the challenges of life. Trials and trouble and tragedy come and we look down. And sustained looking down will have the problem controlling us. Or we become so consumed with the problem that it becomes all that we can see. Until we believe that the problem is all there is, until all we see is what needs to be done and handled and corrected and solved and supplied and changed. And then we appear so small, too small to do anything or think that anything can be done. Unchecked looking down will have us living in ways that are beneath us until we travel in the, tra in the direction that we are looking. Some of us simply look around. I mean, after all, I think it was Mrs. Mr. Rogers' mother who told us to always look for the helpers. And whereas that's some good advice, looking around only will only show us people. Leaving us hoping that other people can keep us afloat, get us through over the hump. And as much as other people can love us or can sympathize with our pain, people rarely have all the power we need, all the presence we expect, or nor can provide all the resources that we require. Yes, people can hold our hands, but they can't heal broken hearts. People may show up in our time of need, but they cannot stay with us through every moment of the storm. People may be as rich as Bill Gates, but there are still some things that we just can't pay our way through. Yeah, money can buy us a bed, but it can't buy sleep. Money can buy us pills, but it can't buy peace. Money can buy us a lover, but it can't buy love. Money can buy us clothes, but it can't buy class. Money can buy us a house, but it cannot buy a home. Money can buy us a health plan, but it can't always by good health. When we look around, all we see is somebody with problems and priorities of their own. When we look around, all we can see is our situations and others walking through circumstances of their own. When we look around, only look around, we see another finite, frail, fallible creature of the dust just like us. Because when we look around, we see people. Then there are some of us who look back. We're rehearsing, regretting, remembering the past. We are the ones who cannot seem to get past the if I, we, they had only or had not done, then I, we, or they would not be in this mess. And whereas I affirm that self-reflection and behavior observation are helpful, healthy and necessary tools for growth. We avoid fixing today by focusing solely on yesterday so that by tomorrow we're regretting our lack of action today. And then the cycle continues because we're always at least one moment, one hour, one day, one week, one month, one year, one decade behind. Here are the cliff notes. Don't look down because it's not the direction you wish to go. Don't look just around because people can't always help you. Don't look back because life is moving forward with or without you. If we need some help, then I think the first thing we should do is to look up. For Psalm 121 reminds us that God is our creator and our keeper. 
The Lord who has made heaven and earth calls us back to Genesis 1, to the God who creates something out of nothing, who calls those things that be not until they are, that fashions the worlds by the utterance of divinely spoken words, so that even when I am so clumsy that I break a thing and so feeble that I cannot make a thing and so lost that I cannot find a thing and so weak that I cannot do a thing, I have a God who can create any and everything and still has the power to work all things together for our good, a God who brings order out of chaos and sets the boundaries of the sea and constructs the contours of the land and carves out the craters of the moon and no matter what it looks like or feels like or seems like, still has the wind and the rain, the little bitty babies, you and me siblings, the whole world in divine hands. And when life and people and what is dear to us, um, when life or people take what is dear from us, I am reminded that they cannot take us from the creator who is God, not affliction or persecution or distress or famine or nakedness or peril or sword or guns. No, in all these things, we are more than victorious through him who loves us. For I, like Paul, am convinced that there is nothing in all of creation, a creation that is still controlled by God, that is able to separate separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord and that the God who creates is also the God that keeps. The Lord is a keeper keeping our feet secure when life would trip, trip us up a vigilant, keeping vigilant watch over us even when we cannot watch out over ourselves, keeping an eye on us and protecting us from death dealing forces. The Lord is our keeper, keeping love in our hearts and soundness of our minds and praise on our lips and strength in our bodies and a will to press on and our eyes stayed on the Lord. So look up because that's where our peace comes from. Look up because that's where our joy comes from. Look up because that's where our strength comes from. Look up because that's where our hope comes from. Look up because that's where our help comes from. Help to look down at our present condition and know that where we are is not where we have to end up. Help to look around and not be discouraged when people don't act like they ought. Help to look back and rectify situations rather than run from them. So look up like the hymn writer who sang, My faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary. Look up like the psalmist who penned, I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. For some reliable sources told us to hold our heads up. Because y'all, there's still some help if we would only look up. Glory, glory.